Hello, and on behalf of the entire worship team, welcome to First Baptist Church of Fall River. My name is Jeff Walls, moderator of the church. We are deeply grateful that you have joined us at this time. And happy Mother's Day to each person as they celebrate and honor their mother in their own way. We miss First Baptist tradition to hand out a flower to every woman as they enter our sanctuary on this special day and we look forward to the time when we will begin that tradition anew. We are here at this time to worship and praise God, for truly it's God's strength and love that can get us through any circumstance, including these challenging days. It is Hebrews 6.15 that tells us, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. I think we can all relate right now to being asked to patiently endure and as we await the next unknown chapter of our lives together to see what unfolds and so if you are here again enjoy the comfort and strength of faithfully gathering together each week we welcome you back and if you are here for the first time we are so happy you have found us welcome for those that live in Fall River, this same service can be seen later today at 1 p.m. on Fall River Cable TV Channel 95. We are grateful to FRC Media for this time and pray that each week more people will find First Baptist Church as a source of hope and a place to share our love for the Lord. Perhaps you could call a Fall River friend of yours today and tell them of this service airing at 1 p.m. today on Channel 95 so they may be blessed as well. And if you have prayer concerns or joys to share, please call the church office to share what is on your heart. Your message will be passed along and I assure you, your needs will be prayed over. If it is less about prayer and more about this worship service that is on your heart, we want to hear from you. The church phone number is 508-672 five three eight one or if you prefer our email address is church office at fbc fallriver.org and again your message will be shared and uplifted and finally speaking of sharing we continue to count on you for your weekly offering please share your offering by mailing it in the church address is 228 north main street Fall River, Massachusetts, 02720. Or if you prefer, you can use our bank's online bill paying feature and have your bank send out a check to First Baptist Church of Fall River. Thank you. And now, please let us join together in today's responsive call to worship. Place your trust in God, O people, who is our help and shield who is our strength and song. Small and great may we be blessed by the maker of heaven and earth. You and your children and your children's children, your neighbor and the sojourner. We shall call upon the name of God and give praise. Let us pray. God of many names, my name is known to you. I am held in the hand of your life, and what you will make of me is still in the designing. All I know is that I cannot make myself any more than I could in my mother's womb, but this I can do. 
This I choose. I give myself into the hand of your continuing creativity, my past with its joys and triumphs, its failures and regrets, my present with its struggles and accomplishments, its setbacks and hopes, my future with its fears and freedom, its pain and promise to loose and to bind, to stretch and to shape, to become what I will and what you most desire. In the name of Jesus, I ask it and I pledge it, joining with others who name his name and pray his prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy names. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul, take joy, take joy. From the Apostle Paul and his first letter to Timothy, his disciple, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Do not rebuke an older man harshly, but exhort him as if he were your father. Treat younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, and younger women as sisters with absolute purity. Give proper recognition to widows in need. Yet if there are children or grandchildren, these should learn, first of all, to put their religion into practice by caring for their own family, and so repay their parents or grandparents. Especially to be honored for her worthiness is the woman who has shown hospitality, seen to the needs of the saints, helped those in trouble, and devoted herself to all kinds of merciful and loving deeds. The pharaoh of Egypt was a man of absolute power who was ruling absolutely. His underlings wanted to keep their jobs, so to protect themselves from his unpredictable moods combined with total control of others, they never fully told him what was going on in Egypt at any given time. Thus does dictatorship sow the seeds of its own destruction. Pharaoh's accounting department was pretty good at keeping track of the property, how many soldiers it took to protect the borders, whether there were enough slaves for his building campaign. But now he was worried about having too many slaves. As the Bible story goes in the early chapters of Exodus, The more he afflicted them, the more they grew in number. So he needed a plan. Enough Hebrew boy children to grow into strong young men, but not so many that they could organize their anger into insurrection. Let us deal shrewdly with them, he thought to himself, and then proclaimed his plan aloud for moderate genocide an edict to the Hebrew midwives. If it is a boy child you come to deliver, you shall smother him. But if it is a daughter, she shall live. He could always adapt the ratio later. The people Pharaoh forgot to factor in were the midwives themselves, so committed to the survival of their people that they were going to deliver whichever babies Mother Nature sent them 
girls or boys, and in whatever number. They were so successful and so significant to salvation history that we've even learned their names, Shifra and Pua. Pharaoh summons them to court, asking why the birth rate of boys among the Hebrew women has remained so high. Shifra and Pua told the simple truth. The Hebrew women are strong. A life of daily struggle has made them so. We get the call to come and deliver a child. We arrive as soon as we can, but the baby is already here. It is too late. Now what's an outsmarted chief executive to do? Plan B. So Pharaoh charged all the people, saying, Every son that is born you shall cast into the river Nile. The daughters shall live. Pharaoh was himself a father of a daughter, but he wasn't factoring her into his strategies either, as time would eventually tell. Scripture goes on to say, Now a Hebrew man named Amran took to wife a woman of the same tribe of Levi named Jochebed. She bore a son, and when she saw that he was a goodly child, strong and handsome, she hid him three months. She probably would have done so even if he had been weak and ugly, but this was another woman brave enough to risk the consequences of disobedience. Three months could buy her time. With the help of her daughter, who is young enough to still be a child with the run of the neighborhood, yet old enough to observe and report on what happens down by that river, they make a plan. Pharaoh's daughter, the lovely princess, comes with her maid servants at the same time of day, every day, you see, to bathe in the water, enjoy the breezes, to escape the palace confines and the heat of high noon. When Jacobed could hide her son no longer, she took for him a basket made of bulrushes, light enough to float, and daubed it with pitch to make it waterproof. She put the child in it and placed him among the reeds at the river's shore, and his sister stood at a distance to be vigilant and watch and see what would be done with him. The baby fit securely in the basket, no room to squirm around and tip himself over. He lay serenely upon the very waters into which he was supposed to drown. Miriam keeps watch. We know her name is Miriam because she is another link in the survival of the Hebrew people, another of the mothers of Israel. If it takes five or six women joining forces to outwit one tyrant, well, that's nothing new. If the odds are not in your favor, observe, analyze, plan, organize, and outnumber him. So far, we have the two midwives, one birth mother, one firstborn sister, and now the next player in this grand drama the ultimate in disobedient daughters, so close to Pharaoh's own heart that he would never suspect. She will complete this circle of rebellion and ruin that will one day bring down his dynasty. Miriam remains in the marshes, quietly saying nothing, but she sees everything. The royal entourage arrives at the water. Someone discovers the baby. The princess stares at this basket and this little boy in utter disbelief. Miriam waits for the shock to subside and for entrancement to set in. She waits long enough for the princess to fall in love with the infant, whose family could not bear to drown him themselves. The princess bends down to pick up the baby, and Miriam still waits. It is too soon to interrupt. The bonding must begin between them before Miriam dares to breathe out loud. Then 
she makes her move. Oh, ma'am, what a lovely baby. His smile is just like yours. What have you named him? And now we have it. This princess is more than a pretty face. She knows this has to be a forbidden boy child. She says as much aloud to her handmaidens. So Miriam seizes the moment again and asks, Shall I go and call you one of the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Miriam has just voiced out loud what she has read in the eyes of Pharaoh's daughter, the inner working of a motherhood dream. The princess is thinking to herself, I will keep him. I will raise him as mine. I will bring him to court and name him as my son. And thus I will ensure, by the only means possible, my own line of succession to the throne. It will not pass to me as my own birthright when father dies, because I am only a woman. But it will pass to my son, because I have, despite all the odds, just the very son I need. Miriam runs for her own mother, the baby's birth mother. She and the princess together will raise this innocent, illegal bundle of boyhood until Moses is old enough to be weaned. And then Jacobed will have to face the anguish of every mother separated from her child by the forces of history or the ravages of war. But for now, that pain will be postponed. The baby is named Moshe, the one who is drawn forth, or the one who draws forth. Either translation, the name is equally fitting. The child who is drawn out of the water will re-enter those very waters decades later at the helm of the Exodus, at the focal point of all salvation history. On this Mother's Day, we revisit this old, old story to help us remember those whom Pharaoh, to his deep regret, forgot. He didn't factor in the women. Generations later, the theme will repeat itself when the king of Persia severely underestimates his wife, Esther. Generations after that, a woman named Mary gives birth to a son she names Jesus and escapes the murderous plot of King Herod to flee with him to, of all places, Egypt. Mary, still venerated as the Queen of Heaven, whose praises are sung to this day.
Every woman in the world has a name, of whom written history records only a minuscule number. Actual history has been shaped and reshaped by countless women from time immemorial. Today we remember to remember them. The famous women and the nameless women keep on keeping on, being skillful midwives, courageous mothers, vigilant sisters, powerful princesses, the bloodline of nations, playing their part in world history, whatever their role might be, until the justice of God is satisfied and the mercy of God is manifest, until freedom under God belongs not just to some who seize the power, but to the children's children's children of the whole inhabited earth. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you deep and abiding thanks for all the mothers you have bestowed upon our lives. They are the ones we were born to and the ones who raised us. In some of our families, we give thanks for the ones who rescued us and who shielded us against the accidents of our birth. Foster mothers, adoptive mothers, dads who have had to step up regardless of their own desolation to be both father and mother to us in our loss. We ask your special blessing upon those mothers who are far away, in physical distance that we cannot cross in these days of mutual isolation, and a blessing upon the souls of those we have given back to you, who now abide in the company of heaven. Their names are now written in the book of life, eternal life, and as long as we have memory at all, we will remember them. The most blessed among your children also count grandmothers, godmothers, stepmothers who are nothing like the stereotype, aunts, elder sisters, next-door neighbors, teachers, guidance counselors, Cub Scout den mothers, university dorm mothers. These are all the women who have helped to make us, mold us, mend us, and mentor us. We give them praise, and we give you gratitude, O oh God. Help us do so each and every day, for that is how they have influenced our lives. For all your orphaned children, we ask protection and pray for their survival, their well-being, and their defense against despair. The pharaohs of this world make them orphans and discount every pain they bear. Lead us not only to remember them, but to be a part in their salvation history as well. Let us become courageous, vigilant, compassionate, and just plain present to their needs, conspiring with one another that tyranny in any form may be subverted, and that the children of every tribe and nation may live to claim their futures and their destiny. Amen. I want to sit at your feet, drink from the cup in your hand, lay back against you and breathe, feel your heart beat. This love is so deep, it's more than I can stand. I melt in your peace, it's overwhelming. your feet drink from the cup in your hand lay back against you and breathe feel your heart beat. and now by way of benediction may the christ of the pilgrim path reveal himself in every situation we would rather not face and in every face that we hold most dear. Waking and walking, God is with us. Working or resting, God is with us. Gathered or scattered, God is with us. Thanks be to God. Amen.